Thank you for joining us today. Today we are continuing our series on Pentecost, and today I'm going to be talking about allowing the Holy Spirit to lead you. You know, what kind of person would you be today if the Holy Spirit had not led you, if God was not guiding you according to His plan and His purpose that we follow? Who would have been your role model? We're going to be talking about that here in a a few minutes. But before we do that, we're going to enter into worship. So be thinking about that as we worship the Lord. The way, the truth, the life, I believe you are the way. The 
When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy at your home When brokenness and pain is all I know well, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. We're shame no longer has place to hide Well I am not a captive to the lies I'm not afraid to leave my past behind well, I won't be shaken No I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Love tasted. free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here 
Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Lord Your presence, Lord There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Love tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become, let us become. More aware of your presence, let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us experience the glory of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware. Thank you, worship team. You know, I can remember when I was a, a, a teenager, there were basically two ways to communicate. And that was to write a letter or make a telephone call. You know, the way our mail system is today, at least here in Roanoke, uh, you wonder if it's going to get there. In fact, so a lot of people are not mailing important things they're they're paying bills online they're doing things different way you know today we rely on email and text messages to communicate with others much more than the 
the traditional mail system. You know, before we text message, before we email, you know, the three fastest ways to communicate information were the telegraph, Morse code, and the telephone, verbal communication, and the third way was telegossip. And sometimes that was quicker than but the other two. <laughs> they were the fastest ways to communicate. But today we have text messages, we have uh, Facebook, we have Twitter, we have Snapchat, and who knows what else is going to come. Messages appear in real time on our computer screens, on our mobile phones, or even on our watches. I mean, they come that quick. Today, through the power of the Internet, we can have friendships with people around the world. Do you use Twitter or Facebook or Snapchat? I know different generations use different things. In fact, there were some people that say, well, I don't use Facebook because that's old people communication. Or I, I Snapchat or I Twitter or I tweet or whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. It is all communication. So how do you use it? What do you say? Some people, they post hardly anything, and there are some people that post everything. I had this for lunch. I went here. I'm taking a picture in the bathroom. They post everything. Is there something more you could use it for? I think so. You know, on my Facebook, I have a number of friends that I have never physically met. Some of them are friends of friends. Others have become friends since listening to our social media, our church services. It's amazing the lives that God is touching through that. In fact, there have been some people that I've reconnected with who were in our church years ago and have moved and now watch us faithfully online. You know, I spend time praying about various situations, things that I know about from talking to people in the real world, things about that I'm communicating with my friends about, and things that God places on my heart. Those are the things that I pray about. You know, some of the things that God prompts me to share with specific people. Others to share with groups. But I'm always trying to listen to what God and His Spirit are trying to guide me and tell me. You know, over the years I've shared uh, with people the things that God puts on my heart. I may not e even remember sharing it, but it, it it's what God told me to tell them. And at that point, it ministered to them in such a way that it's like, that was a point, and I, and I can tell you, sometimes I'm like, I don't even remember sharing it. I just know I share what God puts on my heart. It was the thing that they needed to hear at the very moment. You never know when God will use you to share and minister to somebody in a situation that someone is facing. You know, there have been times in my life where, where God uses other people to share a word that encourages me. See, we need to pray that the Holy Spirit continues to keep our eyes and our ears and our hearts open to hear what he wants to speak or what he wants to do and to have the boldness to share it. To be the person that God has called you to be. I believe that the Holy Spirit does amazing things in people today when they are willing vessels. I believe that the right thing now that he's doing in each of us to refine us, to change us, and to bless us. We can look back in life and see how the Holy Spirit leads us and how he does things. And where would we be if we had not followed him? If where God was not guiding us and you were not doing things according to his plan and his purpose, who would you have followed? Who would have been your role model? Think about that. Would it, would it be a movie star? Would it be, would it be an actor? 
Would it be a singer? Would it be a sports star? Would it be a bodybuilder? Who would it be? What would you like to be if you could become anyone you wanted to be? Would you be a scientist or an artist? Would you be a musician or an actor? Would you be an author or a teacher? Would you be a butcher, a baker, or a candlestick maker? We don't know. If you could be anyone, would you be willing to become the person that God wants you to be? Are you following the Spirit and His work within you today? What would life be like if you allowed Him and allowed yourself to be the person that God wants you to be? What difference would there be in your life tomorrow if you allowed the Spirit to work in you today? I want to encourage you to to challenge you to examine where you were really need to be at and where God really wants you to be. As we focus on Pentecost over the last few weeks and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us, that's what we're talking about. You know, the verse that I want to focus on this today is 1 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. 10 through 12, which says this, God has revealed to us by his spirit. The spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except for the spirit of God. We have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God that we may understand what God has freely given us. I like how the New Living translates this, this verse. It says this, It was to be us that God revealed these things by the His Spirit. For His Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. No one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thoughts except... God's own spirit, and we receive God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. For many people in the world today, there are times in life that nothing seems to happen the way they want it to happen. Everything seems without, with, that boring or useless or no meaning so many people want to be someone else simply because their own life seems so empty they have no direction they have no focus of where they need to be at be honest in your spiritual walk there have been times where you have complained that everything is the same, no growth, no direction. And you felt that you're, that it's like, I feel so empty, I don't know where I'm going. And the Spirit prompts you to do something, and yet you've said no. Maybe it's fear that keeps us from doing something different. Or we don't like change, we like everything the same. Maybe there have been times in your life when doubt has stopped you from moving forward. It stopped you from allowing the Holy Spirit to work in your life. Maybe there have been times where you've asked, why, why, Lord, why? Maybe there's been times where you have refused to ask yourself why. I, I don't want to be moved. I like it right here. It's It's easy. We may not have received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that's from God. That we may understand what God is up to and what he's freely given us. You know, sometimes you got to put some effort in. So why do we choose to accept less than what God has called us to be? Why do we want the best? 
that God has for us. Why do we spend so much time desiring to be like someone else and ignore what God is calling us to be? God has called you to be something amazing and something special. And so many times we don't know what it is and so we're fearful. So how can we move past the feeling that something is wrong and allow God to work in our lives today? How can we move past those things? How can we have greater joy in our life? How can we be satisfied? How can we be the people that God has called us to be? The simple answer is we must allow the Spirit to work in our lives so that we can become the people of God that he's called us to be. Do you allow the Spirit to work in your life? Do you allow Him to do what He wants to do? Are we thankful for the blessings that God has given us every day to enjoy? When was the last time that you thanked God for His, the beauty of His creation? When was the last time that you thanked God for what He's doing in your life? When was the last time that you thanked God for what He provides for you every day? Your food, your, your bed, your home, your clothing, your family. When was the last time you thanked God for his love and his grace and his mercy? When was the last time you allowed the Spirit to work through you for God's glory? When was the last time you thanked God for the work of the Holy Spirit in your life daily? When was the last time you asked the Spirit to work in your life to help you to be the person that God wants you to be? It's true that God knows your past, God knows your today, and He knows your future. You know your past, you're living in your today, and you sure have a hope for the future. Does your plan align with God's plan? The past, the present, the future belong to God. And we need to be allow, allowing the Holy Spirit to work in our life in such a way that we end up where God wants us to end up. Are you willing to give God control? Are you willing to let the Spirit in your life to be in your home, to be in your family, to be in your workplace? Are you allowing him to work there? Are you scared? He may ask me to do something. He may ask me to pray for somebody. He may ask me to give money. He may ask me to be kind, even when they don't deserve kindness. We will never experience the full joy and contentment that God wants if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to work in our life. We all need to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. With His power, our life can become a blessing to others. With His power, others will see and experience the love that Jesus Christ has through us. Are you willing to? To allow God to use you to bring glory to Him? Are you willing to open your life to the Holy Spirit and be a blessing to the people you meet? Remember what we've received, not the Spirit of this world, but the Spirit from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. You know, God has called us to share our life and his life with others. Are you allowing the Holy Spirit to work through you to become the person that God has called you to be? He wants to work in your life. He wants to touch you. He wants to, to, to bring about new things. He wants to give you direction like you've never had before. Let me pray for you today. Father, we just pray that your Holy Spirit would just come and minister to us. Lord, let Pentecost happen where we are today. Let your spirit just set on us that we may have the boldness to speak and do the things that you ask us to do. 
Lord, you, you want to do great things in and through us. And, Lord, I just pray you open our hearts to do the things that you want us to do. Lord, let us step out in boldness. Let the Spirit of God just well up with inside of us that we may share with others as you share with us. We give you glory and honor today. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm so glad you joined us today. If you'd like to join with us in person, we would love to have you at the church on Sundays at 10 a.m. Our address is 2360 Hardy Road, Benton, Virginia. We would love to have you. If you'd like to give, you can go to our website, use PayPal, or use Bill Pay at your own bank, or you can use the U.S. Mail. We would love to hear from you. I know the U.S. Mail is not always as dependable, so if you can use Bill Pay, great. We would love to have that. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May you find His peace and strength every day.